Welcome to the presentation of our paper, um, Towards Best Practice in Explaining Neural Network Decisions with LRP. My name is Sebastian Lepushkin and I'm the corresponding author of this paper. In the last years, deep nets have demonstrated impressive performance in a wide array of tasks. However, they are also regarded as intransparent black box predictors. And this has sparked the conception of a rich zoo of XAI approaches which aim to solve this intransparency problem. In our paper, we concentrate our attention on one particular method, the layer-wise relevance propagation. Um, we will summarize a best practice which has quietly emerged in literature in the recent years and um, applicable to um, feedforward deep neural networks and for the first time investigate and quantify the effects of this best practice. In this talk, I will provide an overview about um, feedforward nets to which this um, best practice is applied. I will provide then an overview over the layer-wise relevance propagation. And then I will discuss experiments and results quantifying our observations. Uh, Feed-forward networks can be considered the workhorse of contemporary machine learning. They usually um, consist of a sequence of layers, starting with a stack of convolution, pooling, and nonlinear activations, followed by a stack of dense or fully connected layers with nonlinearities. Popular architecture variants are the layer five, very small ones, um, Incept Google's inception architecture, the AlexNet CaffeNet ones, and VGG likes, and for example, also with DenseNet architectures. The goal of LRP is um, to precisely inform and quantify which features a neural network predictor uses for prediction and decision making. And by that I mean um, it, it, it aims to identify the features it uses for prediction, but, it also, but also how it uses those features for prediction making, meaning for a class the model predicts or predicts for, does a certain feature speak for this class or does it speak against this class? LRP is a modified backprop method and is first and foremost um, defined as a set of constraints, which means we have the first constraint, conservativity. And conservativity here means that a certain amount of relevance, which is backpropagated from one neuron to its input neurons, should be conservative in mass. So there is no relevance injected or lost in this process. And the second constraint is um, proportionality of relevance, which means the relevance amount back propagated and decomposed should be proportional to the activation of a unit uh, input neuron with which it contributes to the output neuron. The relevance um, quantity of a downstream neuron is then determined by the sum of all incom incoming um, neurons, which means between two layers, um, the amount of relevance should stay the same. These concepts or constraints directly translate into the first and simplest LRP decomposition rule, the Z rule, and its close cousin, the epsilon rule. The Z rule, um, this rule is, or has seen um, success in application in shallower models, such as lonet like architectures, um, multi-layer perceptrons or back of words support vector machines or any other arbitrary mappings, which are potentially non-differentiable. Um, with deeper models and especially relu activated um, deep nets such as DVGT, this, uh, these two rules are affected by the so-called gradient shattering effects, um, which manifests in very noisy and high frequent, um, frequent um, highly frequent attribution maps in the input space, as can be seen here. For this purpose, um, the original publication of LRP also has introduced the alpha beta rule, which separately decomposes the positive parts of the forward mappings and the second negative part of the forward mappings. And after this decomposition has taken place, merges set, um, those separate branches of um, relevance again. This effectively deals with gradient shattering. However, it comes at the cost of class discriminativity if the rule is applied to the whole network um, in every layer and adds additional constraints to its application. Later publications have int introduced the flat rule, like in this musical flat, which um, uniformly distributes the relevance of a neuron across all its um, input neurons, which 
can be used, for example, to control the scale and semantic explanations. And the recently emerged best practice um, defines itself as a composite application of those rules I um, just now introduced and assigns specific rules to specific parts of the model. One common pattern is the application of LLP epsilon with a small factor epsilon to the dense stack at the top of the model, an application of LLP alpha beta to large parts of the convolution stacks in order to um, combat this gradient shattering effect, and then apply the LLP flat rule to the input layer of the neural network, uh, input layers of the neural network, in order to um, gain invariance against um, shifts and translations in input space, and as I said, control the scale of the neural network explanation. In this figure, we have a qualitative overview um, over the outputs of several attribution approaches and methods. To the left, you can see an input showing an image with a cat and a dog, um, which has been fed into a VGG16 model, and um, which has been explained, um, or the model's decision-making has been explained with respect to classes tiger cat and Bernice mountain dog. Subfigures A to D show the attribution maps of methods which only use one and the same rule for all parts of the network, meaning LFPC, which is with, with its high frequency heat maps affected by gradient shattering, the LFP alpha one heat maps, which are not affected by gradient shattering, but are also not class discriminative, and then the guided backdrop and pattern attribution heat maps, which also are not very class discriminative. Only the outputs of um, the composite LRP show clear class discriminativity. For example, so and while those heat maps computed with the LRP composite certainly look nice and more intuitive, we need to make sure that they actually more representative of what the model is doing. And for that, um, we have at our disposal the ImageNet dataset with about 15,000, 50,000 samples with um, bounding box annotations, and the Pascal VUC 2007 dataset with about 15,000 unique pairs of image and class, um, image to class bounding box annotations. And the idea is here to measure the attribution score landing inside the bounding box. But before we can do that, we need to make sure that the model actually uses the object and not the background for prediction making. And we verify that by taking all the available images for both models and datasets, and in turn, measuring how the model um, predicts on those images as f of x, and compare that to a prediction of the metal model as f of x tick, where we occlude for once the object itself or the complete background. And across all those measurements, um, we order them with um, according to bounding box size and group them into 100 um, bins. And what we see is that both models dominantly react to the occlusion of the object, which means the models have learned to predict based on the object themselves. So and this allows us to meaningfully um, quantify the representativity of um, the attribution of an XII method by measuring the relevance inside of the bounding box. And we cook up for this um, the measure mu which is the ratio of relevance inside the bounding box divided by the total sum of positive relevance outside the bounding box. And from that, we have a derivation, this mu w, which weights the mu with the bounding box size versus image size. What we do now is that um, we compute this measure for all the available samples for both data sets and models. And we can see that, um, see that the composite LLP method outperforms all other tested methods in this setting. Um, we also see that um, the Composite application is more important than the actual parameterization of the LRP method. And um, the results are especially evident for smaller bounding box sizes, which also makes sense because here it's more, more difficult to precisely allocate um, or attribute um, attribution scores inside the bounding box. Once the bounding box is large enough, you pretty much can't miss anymore. In our paper, we discuss a recent trend in applying LRP with different rules to different parts of the model, which provides several beneficial effects such as increased class di di discriminativity, reduced um, effects of gradient shattering, and meaningful attribution signs for corresponding objects. We also quantify these effects in a multi-label and multi-class classification setting. Here's a list of references mentioned over the course of the uh, presentation. And here's a list of um, interesting resources I would recommend having a look at, especially at heatmapping.org for um, further information, tutorials, events, and stuff. Thank you for your attention.